Hi, welcome to this video. I already got a video where I dive into JavaScript testing and I explain what it is, why we would do it and how it generally works with the JS package. In this video, I'll build up on that last video. So definitely check that out and the article which belongs to that other video. And in this video, I want to dive into how we can test asynchronous code, specifically how we can test asynchronous dependencies, like for example, functions we got where we let's say execute some code where we reach out to an API. How can we test such code efficiently with just JS? Let's take a closer look. I again prepared a simple project for this video. Now you find it uh, in a link below the video in the video description. And if you start the project by double clicking the index.html file, you'll see a button there. If you click that button, you will eventually see an all uppercase text being printed here. Now responsible for that output is this code here. I got a very simple setup here using Webpack. And here I'm getting access to a button in my DOM. I'm adding a listener to print a title. In print title, I call load title, which is this function here. In that function, I reach out to fetch data, which is provided in a different file, also created by me. There, I seem to get some data object um, of which I extract the title. I then transform this title to be all uppercase and I return that, hence I can print it here. Now, if we have a look in this HTTP file, into this HTTP.js file, here I'm using a third party package, Axios. So this is not written by me, this is another third party package. And here in fetch data, I make a get request to a dummy API. So this is a real API in the web, a real request is made here. This API is not maintained by me. Um, it's just a, an API we can use for playing around, for testing and there, I get back a response object. Axios gives me such a response object, which happens to have a couple of properties like the status code, for example, but also the data property, which I'm extracting here. This is essentially what I do. Now let's write some tests. I already installed the jest package here. And I also already um, configured my test command here to use jest. I also have a project where I use node.js import export syntax because just uses that by default. And just as with my other testing video where I gave you an introduction to testing with just um, there, I explained that just uses that syntax, that setting it up to understand a different syntax would be more complex. And I still don't want to do that here because here I want to focus on testing async code. So we got everything set up to write some tests. So let's do that. You learned in that last video that you can create a new file with .test.js at the end to have JS pick it up and execute it automatically. So this will be the testing file for app.js. Let's say we want to test print title. Conveniently, I'm already exporting it here at the bottom. So what can we do? Well, in app test.js, we can use the test function, which is globally available when we run that file with jest. There we give it a description, some text, um, yeah, some description of what should be tested here. And there I have uh, should print an uppercase text, for example. I have my arrow function then that should execute or that contains the testing logic. And in there we define our expectations. Now we could expect um, uppercase text with the help of some regex magic or anything like that. But here, because we'll change that anyways, I just want to expect this text because right now I will always get that text for the API endpoint I'm hitting. So I expect, and now I need to import that function, which I want to test. So that will be print title. I'm uh, pulling that out of uh, my exported object in the app.js file. So I expect print title, the result of that function call to be equal to my all uppercase text here. This is my expectation. We can now run that test by running npm test and this executes all test.js files. And this actually fails because it fails to execute add event listener uh, of null. Now the reason for that actually is that app.js contains some code that will always run when this file gets executed and it does get executed when I import from that file. And it tries to access the DOM here, which just doesn't work in this environment here. The real DOM is not loaded here. So 
an easy way around that is to take that function and export it into a separate file, maybe a util.js file. This is also something we did in the last video already. Export print title here. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to import something from that file only without executing app.js and therefore without hitting the real DOM. So we can rename that testing file here to util test.js and we import print title from dot slash util and in app.js since I removed print title from there we also need to import print title uh, by requiring it from the dot slash util file here. And now for that to work I'll also have to move load title over to util.js because print title depends on that. So let's move load title into that file as well. That means that fetch data also needs to move in there. So from app.js, let's grab the fetch data import and move that to the util.js file. And now with that set up, if we rerun npm test here, now it should be able to run our test here. And it does, but I get an error that essentially it expected a string, but it received undefined. And now this already shows us a, a problem we have with asynchronous code testing. Well, actually in print title, I am indeed returning nothing. So getting undefined as a result makes perfect sense. But even if I would return something, like for example in here, if I not only log the title, but I also return the title in here, if I do that and I rerun, I will still get that error, I can already say that. The reason for that is that, and that has nothing to do with testing, that's normal JavaScript behavior, return statements inside of callbacks or inside of promise then calls are not executed or are executed, but JavaScript does not wait for them. It does not return this value as a return value for this overall function. Instead, this is the return value of that inner function here. And we're not testing this inner function, we're testing that overall function. So in our case here, one simple solution would be to test load title. Here we return something in the inner function and we also return something in the main function, we return the whole promise. So chances are that we get back a promise here to which we then can listen and that might allow us to expect something helpful. So let's change something, let's export load title here so that we can test it. Let's go to util test JS and there I will not expect something like that, but I'll get my title. But instead I will import load title here and I will execute load title and this gives us a promise. So I will add then here and in there I know I'll get my title because that's exactly the way I use it in print title, right? I have load title and then I get my title. So now I have the exact same usage here in util test JS. And now here I want to expect something that my title should be equal to that, whoops, to that uppercase title I got here. So we can grab that title here, copy it, and that is what I expect as a value. Now if I rerun npm test, it actually passes because now this test succeeds. So this is better, this is how we could test our asynchronous code, but we still have a problem here. The problem is we're still hitting our API. So here in util.js I'm using fetch data and if you remember we're defining that in the HTTP file, so here, and there we're making a real API request. We typically don't want to do that in testing. We might exceed certain API quotas if we do that. If we're testing post requests, we might even edit something on the API, which we certainly don't want to do as part of testing, certainly not with our production API at least. So hitting the API is typically not something we wanna do. There also are other reasons against it. What would we achieve by really making that HTTP request? Do you want to test if your API works correctly? If you're building that API, you should do these tests during the API development, not when working on your front end. These two should be separated. So that is certainly not something you want to test. If the API works or not is not something you test in your front end code. You might test error fallbacks or anything like that, but not if the API works correctly. You also don't want to test if the get method exposed by Axios works correctly. 
That is a method provided by a third-party package, and we rely on that package doing its job. So we also don't test third-party package functionalities. We want to test our own code. And our own code here, for example, is that we extract data, and then here that we transform this to uppercase and that we pull out the title. Now, to focus on that, we do something which is called mocking. We mock features, which means we replace features we don't want to test with some dummy implementations. And how could this look here? Well, in util test.js, we got load title. And we want to test if that successfully transforms our title to be all uppercase to be this text. Now, to test this, what we need to do is we need to replace fetch data with a mock. Now, it just gives us a great way of preventing us from using that fetch data method. We can create a new folder called underscore underscore mocks all lowercase underscore underscore next to the files that contain our raw source code. So in this case, in our root folder. Now, here we can add a http.js file. So the same file name as the file that has the function we want to replace. And now in HTTP.js, we can now do some magic to set up some functions that will replace our real functions when running the tests. For that, I'll copy my code from HTTP.js. I'll get rid of access though, because I'll not use that here. I'll still export fetch data though. But in fetch data, I'll simply return a promise which I instantly resolve with promise resolve to an object that has a title property with the text I want to test, which I'll now convert to all lowercase though. So delectus aut autumn. And now that I'm exporting this here, something interesting will happen. In HTTP.js, I added a console log statement to fetch data to see when we're hitting this API and when we're not. If I now run npm test, We are hitting the API, as you can see here. We have that console log statement from the HTTP file in there. Now we can go to util test.js. And in there, we want to add just mock at the beginning and mock the HTTP.js file like this. You can omit .js though. Now if we run npm test, you see, it also took close to a second because it had to do some magic behind the scenes, but you don't see that console log statement. Because what now happens is, when this test gets executed, when this testing file gets executed, just goes ahead and replaces the HTTP file with our mocked file. So all the functions that are exported here are then um, replacing the functions we are normally exporting in the real HTTP file for our tests only. So for the tests only, we use our mocked functions here. So this dummy fetch data, which gives us back an object that allows the other functions to work fine, but which does not hit the API. Because we don't want to test the API response, and we don't want to test the access get method. So we can rely on the API returning us an object that has a title property. And we can rely on the access get method giving us an object, a response, which has a data property. So we don't need to test that. We want to test whether our code in the util.js file correctly extracts the title and transforms it. And that is the case. Otherwise, this test would not have succeeded for our mocked implementation of fetch data where we return an object with a title that is all lowercase, so not what we test for, lowercase, this text. And therefore, since our test succeeds, we know that our transformation here does work. So this is how we can test async code or how we can replace code, how we can replace functionalities if we don't want to, in this case, hit the API. The same would be the case for, let's say, code that accesses the file system. You don't want to do that. Instead, you want to mock such functionalities. You can, by the way, also mock global packages like Axios itself. Instead of mocking our fetch data function, you could create an axios.js file here. And there, we could export our own get function here, which we, of course, have to define. 
because remember in my HTTPS file, I am using the get method of the axis object. So here I want to export a get method and that should be a function that takes a URL as an argument, but we don't care about that URL here. What we want to do here is we can return an object, which in this case, since this is faking the response from Axios, so we want to uh, fake whatever get gives us back and that should be a response object which at least has a data key because we're extracting that. So here in the axis mock we want to have a data object which should in turn be an object with the title we want to test. So that lowercase title we define here. So basically we're now mocking a functionality which is one level above the last functionality where we mocked um, our own function. Now we're using uh, or we're mocking the function this raw function, so this function depends on. So now in the access.js mock file, I'm returning an object which has a data key, which has an object as a value, which has a title key, which is the lowercase version of our text. And with that being mocked, we can go to our util test.js file. We can comment out this mocking of our HTTP implementation. So we'll now not use this HTTP file we created a second ago. JS.js will automatically use mocks of global node modules though. So Axios.js, this mock should be used automatically. We don't have to instruct just to do that. And now we can simply run npm test. And here it um, fails because what I return here is not a promise. And this already proves that this mocked file is being used. Otherwise, it would not have failed. I'm returning an object there and therefore calling then fails. I, of course, have to return a promise here by using promise resolve. So a promise that eventually yields this object. And once I do that, and therefore my mocked get method provides a promise as the real access implementation does, once I do that, it passes again. We see fetching data here because we are now using my original fetch data implementation. But the get method we're using here is not the real one. It's our mocked one. So this one here. And this is how mocking works with Jest. Now below the video you find some article uh, or some links to the official docs with more articles, more information on how mocking can be done with Jest. But I hope that this video also was helpful with understanding why we mock and how we can mock. So how we can replace certain implementations which we don't want to test in our code that depends on them. So I hope this was helpful. Hopefully see you in future videos too. Bye.